what's happened is it's gone. We'll talk about that. It's quite poor. Hello and welcome, my name is Ian and in this video we're going to be looking at this little monster. This is a 19, well late 50s, early 60s Philips reel-to-reel -reel recorder and I bought this for a particular reason. I have a massive collection of audio tapes um, and some of these um, I believe were my father's uh, and what I've I did. I, I bought this machine to have a look for um, to see if there was any recordings of my father. He was a musician back in the fifties uh, and early sixties. So far I haven't found a recording uh, of my father, but I have found some interesting things. I've found um, recordings of my first ever demos. Um, there's also some recordings, uh, mass recordings of some uh, music I made in the early 80s. A fantastic Akai demo tape, which um, has the sounds of trains and gongs uh, and Latin music and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. I also, surprisingly, I played in a duo back in the uh, mid to late 80s. Uh, electronic duo really, but we were doing uh, chart covers really. <laughs> Uh, and at some point in that, while I was with that band, um, I made a recording of one of the gigs. And so there's about an hour and a half's worth of uh, me and my partner, Lionel, playing. The band was called Art of Vision, the covers of the day. Although at the beginning, the lady called us the Art of Fashion, which I quite liked. Um, so I need to be able to digitise this stuff. So what I thought we'd do today is I'm going to just walk you through, I'm going to spool up a tape and walk you through the recorder. I don't have a microphone at the moment so I can't actually record anything on it and I will try and get a microphone at some point. Uh, it's a it's a particular sort of um, socket uh, which is it's not on a jack or an XLR, it's pre that really. 
Not quite sure how old this machine is, but they ran. They they were they were first made in 1957, the year I was born, and then they ran until the mid to late 60s. So um, it could be as old as me. This thing. Uh, so let's spool the tape up, and and I particularly picked this one. Uh, it's got, I, th I think, because I've made some notes. Um, I think it's got a lot of chart stuff from the time which I will need to be aware of because of copyright issues. Um, but it's worth just going through the process of spooling this up. So the first thing to do is I'm going to switch it on. So let me just talk you through the controls on this model. This, the particular model of this is a Philips EL3542A. Not sure what the A means, but uh, we'll, we'll go through this. So it's valve, um, it's got a stereo head, but um, it plays, the amplifier inside is mono. So what it will do is it will play, it'll play three speeds, it'll play one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, or seven and a half. Now studio quality, would be 15 inches per second. Those are inches per second. Um, it's got a very strange way of... Um, there's no on button as such. Uh, I've plugged it in, I've put the power on, and nothing will happen until I press one of these three... these three switches. And what I've noticed is that when I first switch it on, um, we get uh, a whining. Now, the gentleman I bought this off said he'd completely serviced it uh, and it sounds like a clutch but he said that might be slipping because it's it's new and I, I'm assuming that that's that, that's the case so let's let's switch it on and see what happens oh and he didn't do it now the last couple of times I've done it um, you can hear the motor whirring the last couple of times what's happened is it's gone and then it settled down after a few seconds the way we turn it off is that this little button here is the off button. Now, what I've also noticed, because it's valve, that when you first start it up, it takes probably anything of about 20 seconds for the valves to warm up before you get any sound. So you can start a real running and, um, and you don't hear anything for a while. So what we've also got here is, and, this, and the one on here isn't very bright. This is a valve magic eye. Now I'm going to turn all the lights out, I'll try and turn some lights out, uh, so that you can see it and it only seems to glow quite dull. So put it back on again, turn these lights out, still can't see it. You can just see that it's glowing very dull. It should be a lot brighter than that. I suspect that the valve that is dealing with that is going. What it also does is that when uh, it's recording, uh, it, it, it glows in a slightly different way so that you can tell uh, what the line level is, I believe, although I've not seen it. So, stop button, let's turn it off, stop button, fast forward, rewind, and then here we've got play playback button we've also got a record button and you have to push that button in and press th this one and this is the pause button we've also got this we've got while this is in playback mode it's a volume control and a tone control in the center now that becomes um record level when it's in record mode so we haven't tried we've also got up here we've got a, a counter I have to say I haven't really used because uh, uh, but and I always remember I had one of these back in the mid 60s when I, I think for my 11th birthday I got um, a, a transistorized version of this much later version uh, and I always found that the uh, the tape counter was pretty inaccurate really but that's that's part of the cost so let's spool up this reel I've made it so that it's So we fit it around here, we've got a gap here and 
the, these blank reels, the best reels are these ones where we've got a, a groove in, like there. Um, you do sometimes find them where they haven't and they've just got a cut out here. They're slightly more irritating. So we feed that into there, pull it round. We don't want it to go all the way, but we just hold the last bit in and that. And so put it on the three and third because I think that's what it says and we'll start it running. Sounds like it might be on the wrong speed, but we'll just check on that. I'm not sure what we're expecting to see on here. If this is accurate, let's try this on. No. We're going to stop it. I know what the recording is. I think it's from uh, the theme from A Clockwork Orange. The only, the, the other things we've got, uh, we've got this control here. This thing is called a super impose lever. Uh, now I have no idea what that does. Um, when it's playing it's obviously doing something but we're not quite sure what. Now when we come to look I'm going to try and turn it round. Let's, let's turn it off for a bit. Oh there is one more thing. So, what we've also got is this switch. And so, what that switch is, when, because this recorder will be it working stereo, but it'll also work in four track mono. And this tape, uh, because I remember recording this, this has just got commercial music on it and I recorded it in mono. So what we've actually got, it's quite worn, but we've got one and four, two and three. So we've got one set of music on one side and then another on the other side. The other controls that we've got, if I just pull, turn it round a bit, we have these controls down here. Now, the one that I'm particularly interested in is this one here, which says stereo. And what I found is that if I can get the right sort of DIN plug and it's not a standard five pin DIN audio lead it looks like it's a three pin or a four pin so I need to find uh, the right sort of stereo plug I can then take the recordings straight off the playback head and we'll have a quick look at that in a minute the rest of these uh, we've got headphones we've got right and left so you can send them out to, amp to an amplifier or a speaker system um, but the, and they all seem to be running on what's called banana plugs which we don't tend to see very often but you can still buy banana plugs so if I mean that's not something I'm particularly interested in but I definitely need to get a lead for the stereo socket there and I'll put a, um, an image up of, um, of what it looks like uh, from the instruction manual that I've managed to download.
lastly, let's just have a look at the heads. And the thing about uh, this recorder is that the heads are not in the easiest of places to be able to see everything. But if I pull this cover off, and all reels reels have this sort of thing, it's just it's just held on by three pins. So what we've got is the pinch wheel is let me just turn it off. I'll stop it. So we've got this head here is the record playback head. This is the erase head. This the way that this mechanism works is everything moves up to these. These do not move. So and then we've got rollers and all that sort of thing. Now, when I come to do the video on cleaning it, I'll clean all of those and show you how to do that. So I hope that was useful. Um, it's just like an introduction to this particular type of tape recorder. I'm going to go on a journey with this, clearly. Um, I've gone through, like I said, quite a few of the tapes already, and there's a whole load more to go. In the next video, we'll clean the heads and uh, go through that process so you can see how that works. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers now. Bye bye.